Welcome back everyone. So far, I've mentioned two ways to cause a re-render in a React app. A component can re-render if it calls the useState setter function or the useReducer dispatch function. A component can also re-render if its parent component re-renders. Now, let's take a look at the context API, which is another way to cause a component to re-render. In this video, we are going to understand the rendering behavior in React with respect to the context API. If you're looking for an in-depth explanation of React context, I suggest you go through my React Tutorials for Beginners playlist in the channel. In that playlist, I have covered in detail what is React context, why do we need context, and how to use it in a React application. In this video, we are only going to focus on the rendering behavior with respect to the context API. First, let's try to understand at a high level the render phase when we have React context in a component tree. Since we have been through this several times, I'm only going to focus on what is necessary from the context point of view. Now, let's assume that our application has five components. App component, parent component, and three child components, namely child A, child B, and child C. The parent component contains a count state, which it renders in the JSX, and the same count value has to be rendered by child C component as well. So, we create a new count context in the parent component and provide the count value. We then use the use context hook in component C to consume that value. Pretty straightforward usage of the context API. But let's quickly understand how the render phase works in this scenario. Let's say the initial render is completed. So all the components have been rendered once. Now, since the count value is a state variable in the parent component, let's say we called the set count setter function to increment the count value. If the count value increments, the component will be flagged for re-render. We know that React starts from the root component and finds the components flagged for re-render. React sees that the parent component has been flagged. When it's rendering the parent component, React sees that the parent component also renders a context provider. It then checks to see if the context provider has been given a new value. Since we increment the count value, the context provider indeed has been given a new value. React will make a note to re-render all the components that consume the context value. In our example, the component is child C. So React makes its way down the component tree and when it encounters child C, it is going to re-render that component. And by now, you probably know what happens in the rest of the render and commit phase. So this is the rendering behavior with respect to the context API. Of course, there will always be certain points that we have to make note of and the context API is no exception. Let's take a look at an example and see what I'm referring to. Now to get us started, I have already created a few components. So in the components folder, I have created a new folder called context. Within this folder, I have created two new files, contextparent.js and contextchildren.js. In contextparent.js, we have one component called contextparent. Within this component, we have a call to useState, which maintains a count state variable. We also have a log message to indicate the component render. In the JSX, we have a button to increment the count value and display the count value. We also have a child component, which is the child A component. Let's now head to contextchildren.js. 
Now this file contains three children components. I decided that instead of creating three separate files, it is simpler to have all three children components in the same file. Let's take a look at the three components. First, we have child A component. This is the component nested inside the parent component, right here. Now within the child A component, we have the render log message. And for the JSX, we simply display the text child A. And then this component has its own child component, which is child B. If you take a look at child B, it is very similar to child A. It has a log message, the text child B, and has a child component of its own, which is the child C component. The child C component has a log message, and then for the JSX, just the text child C. So if I go back to the slide, we have created this very component tree. Now our aim is to get the count value from the parent component and display it in child C component. And the way to do that is to use the context API. In the parent component, we create and provide the context value and in child C component, we consume it using use context. Let's go back to VS Code and implement that. In the parent component, first let's create a context. So at the top, export const count context is equal to react dot create context. In the next line, I'm also going to create the provider component. The const count provider is equal to count context dot provider. Now we can provide the count value to the child component. So in the JSX, count provider value is equal to count and then child A is the children. Next, let's head over to the child C component and consume this context value. So in context children.js, at the top, import use context from React. In the child C component, const count is equal to use context and pass in count context. Make sure to import it at the top. Then in the JSX, we can display the count value. So child C count is equal to count. All right, let's save the files. Include context parent in app.js and head to the browser to test the rendering behavior. On page load, we see the render messages from the parent component and the three children components. So the initial render works fine. We can also see that the count context value from the parent component is being consumed in the child C component. Now let's observe the render behavior when we update the count value, thereby changing the context value. If you recollect from the render phase slide, I mentioned that if the context provider receives a new value, components consuming the context value will also get updated. So in our case, when I click on the count button in the parent, we should see that the parent and child C components should re-render. However, if I clear the console and click on the count button, you can see that all the four components re-render. This includes the two children components which have nothing to do with the context value. Now this might seem confusing, but the reason is pretty simple. Remember, when a parent component re-renders, all the children components recursively re-render. So what is happening in our example is that when the state in the parent component changes, the parent component re-renders. If parent re-renders, every single child component also re-renders.
This is the default behavior in React. In fact, the component child C we renders because the parent we rendered and not necessarily because the context value was updated. You might ask yourself, then what is the whole point of context? Well, remember, context helps you solve the problem of props drilling. So you don't have to specify props through each nested component. In that aspect, context still remains very helpful. But when it comes to context and the rendering behavior, it is not the most efficient. Now I say that given we write the code like how I have written for this example. There are a few ways to optimize the rendering behavior with context, which we will see in the next few videos. For now, please keep in mind that if you write your code the way I have written, context doesn't really have the best rendering performance. All right, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.